So we humans have pretty powerful brains to process languages like English. For example, if you try to pause the video and read the passage on the screen, you will find that even though it's all jumbled, we can still sort of make it out. However though, English is not optimal for animals like cats or electrical circuits because they don't have the brains to sort of pattern match against every letter, every word there is in existence and the vocal cords to verbalize and make use of it. For electrical circuits in particular, a binary language system is used. So binary means composed of two things. It's either on or off, yes or no, true or false, and zero or one. I think you get the general pattern. And decades of research has led us to the conclusion that a binary language system is the most efficient language system for digital circuits to implement. And let's prove this with a little thought experiment. So say you're nine years old and your best friend lives right across from you. Your parents are strict and we call it bedtime early at 10. But you still want to stay up and chat with your friend without getting caught. And this was before the era of smartphones. So you find that you both do have flashlights. So maybe you guys can work something out. And the first thing that comes to mind usually is what if we can just trace letters in the air? And if you guys ever played with lasers or flashlights, drawing letters in the air is hard to follow because the light trails don't stay on for long enough to um, write down the pattern. So it's kind of like moving my mouse, moving your mouse, right? So I'm going to write the letter H. That's E. Y. So that was there, and as you can see, it's really imprecise. It's hard to follow the zigzaggy patterns, and what if it's foggy outside? So back to the drawing board. So the second thought that you can remember is that maybe we can use blinking lights to talk. Like, that's it. Following traces in the air is kind of hard, but counting is pretty easy. So blink once to mean A, blink two times to mean B, blink three times to mean C, and so on and so on until you get to Z. Then you find that sending the message, how are you, right, how are you, takes a total of 131 blinks. And to send the letters further down the alphabet, like Y, it takes 25 blinks just to send the letter Y across. And I'm not, I'm sure you guys don't want me to stay here and click 131 times. But this system is really inefficient and it has a lot of flaws because first off, even though it's easy to count, it's also easy to miscount and it takes longer to send messages. So with this many blinks. So you think to yourself, surely someone has had this problem before. So you hit the books and you find Morse code. So unlike your system, which only had one kind of blink that you keep on counting, Morse code is made of two different kinds of blinks, a short blink and a long blink, which is represented by a dash, and letters are comprised of patterns of the two. And a long blink is usually represented by a longer, maybe three second um, holding of a flashlight like that. So with this system, sending the message, how are you, only takes 26 blinks. So you saved about a hundred blinks. And this is great because you can send mess you can send messages faster and yeah. So computers use a similar system called blinks, called bits, right? And here is a um, encoded message in Morse code and pause the video and try to decode it yourself. Don't post it in the comments. So computers use bits. And a bit is really a value that is either a one or a zero. And beyond what it is, right, let's focus on what it does. A bit conveys information. And granted, it's a really tiny amount. So what can we do with one bit? Well, one bit can represent a maximum of two possibilities. And it represents information. It conveys information again. So I just said that 0 would mean no, and 1 would mean yes. If we bring that up to 2 bits, we can bring the total number of things that we can re represent to a combination of 4. 
So I just said that 0, 0 would mean bad, 0, 1 can mean okay, 1, 0 can mean great, and 1, 1 can mean low. With three bits, that limit, the maximum limit of patterns that we can make is 8. And notice how the things that we can represent is finite, and it's determined by the number of bits we have. So if you ever hit an error dealing with calculators, like an overflow, because you're dealing, because you're doing like a hundred million times a hundred million times a hundred million or something, you're just really mashing buttons. Uh, chances are that it ran out of bits to represent the next number. So if we built a three-bit calculator, for example, right, the maximum three bits can hold is uh, eight things. So if we do seven plus like five or anything over, uh, it will really overflow and crash because there's no more there's no more bits to represent the next pattern. We only have eight combinations of things that we can map things to. Hopefully that makes sense. So with that, can you guess how many combinations of unique patterns with that we can make with four bits? Well, the formula for finding the maximum limit of patterns that we can make uniquely is 2 to the n power. And it would be 16, because 2 to the 4 power is 16. right? The formula is 2 to the n power, and n is how many bits we have. So we will be building a 16-bit computer, and it was the computer of its time from the 1970s. And the maximum it can represent is 65,536. Uh, in today's modern world, 32-bit computers from the 1990s can hold a maximum of 4 billion, and 64 bits, which came in the 2000s, can hold 18 quintillion, which is, if I remember correctly, more than every atom in the universe or something. So that's probably enough to last us for a longer than our lifetimes, pretty much. So you may be wondering, like, we're building a processor from the 1970s, right? 16 bits. Isn't it going to be irre irrelevant? Isn't it outdated? Well, no, surprisingly not. 99% uh, of the underlying architecture remains the same to this day. And in conclusion, um, binary is like a two-letter alphabet system, and we use it because it's a very efficient and minimal language. And it's very cheap to mass-produce the technology that operates on only zeros and ones. And there's a finite limit to how many things that a computer can represent, and that is determined by 2 to the n power. So in the next section, we'll explore how binary can sort of encode actions and make decisions, which is really fascinating. Anywho, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.